In Afghanistan, humanitarian conditions continue to worsen as winter sets in. The Taliban government, as yet unrecognized by the international community, is struggling to provide basic services and to defend against attacks by Daesh. They're also facing a resistance campaign led by the son of the late Afghan rebel leader, Ahmed Shah Massoud. I sat down with Ahmed Massoud here in Dushanbe to talk about his military campaign and his plans for change in Afghanistan. This is One on One. Much of the international community have turned their backs on Afghanistan. How much support does your resistance movement have? I can say that unfortunately, uh, the support for resistance so far, it has been by the generosity of the Afghan people. And, uh, and uh, we uh, did not also seek support from international community. At this stage, uh, we all, always try to say you know, to the world as well that uh, the situation in Afghanistan truly needs to be paid attention. Uh, and uh, uh, the resistance is growing in the past one year. And, uh, and it's based on the atrocity which is growing, unfortunately, against our people. And uh, the resistance has not been uh, based on the, how much support we receive. It is a must duty that we are doing because of our dignity, of freedom, and of course, because of justice that we do not have right now. Now, this campaign would need steady financing, advanced weapons, and sustained foreign support. How confident are you that this will be provided? Once again, I need to emphasize that uh, the resistance that we are doing from the very beginning, it was not uh, because of those things was provided. Uh, we resisted because uh, our dignity was being questioned. Our freedom has been taken away from us and the justice has, uh, justice has been stripped away of Afghanistan entirely, unfortunately. So therefore, it is a matter of uh, uh, someone who's fighting for its freedom uh, we are doing it as long as those values are not being instated in Afghanistan and being installed in Afghanistan once again. So therefore, uh, I know that it is a very hard way. And of course, if those things that you just mentioned was provided, you know, the path to achieving freedom and justice and achieving the goal and achieving what the people of Afghanistan truly wish would be much easier. Early this year, you met Taliban representatives in Iran. Afterwards, they issued a statement saying you and others were free to return to Afghanistan and that your safety would be guaranteed. You did not return. Why? And our resistance is not because of my personal safety and my uh, personal security. And, uh, but actually, it is for something much you know, bigger than just myself. And as I mentioned, it is for freedom, it is for uh, justice, it is for the people of Afghanistan being able to decide what they want for the future. And those things, unfortunately, are people, uh, they are being stripped away of those uh, values and those things. So therefore, uh, the Taliban, first and foremost, it was a lie. They didn't say those things in the meeting. In the meeting, our message was not for them. Uh, I read uh, the statement and also the interview that Mr. Muttaqi did. He said that I asked for my belongings, actually, which was against, uh, which was opposite of what I said in the meeting I had with him. Uh, my uh, demand was that Afghanistan requires uh, a national dialogue, and we need to start uh, talking with each other, and we need to start a process of trust building again, and we need to allow the people to decide for their future. And uh, they said, well, uh, we give you your house and everything. I said, you can burn them. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't care less. But what I care is, what is the legitimacy of the Afghanistan government? What is the demand of the people of Afghanistan? Those things are more important than anything else for me. And you talk of dialogue. Um, for the Taliban, <clears throat> any offer of peace that does not begin with a recognition of the new order would be a non-starter. How prepared are you to accept the emirate as a way to push through some of the changes that you and many others would seek? The question of uh, a change from within, if it was happening, it would happen uh, in the past one and a half years that they are in Kabul. Unfortunately, more of the trust uh, and more of the time 
that the world is giving to them and lesser they deliver. And the reason being for that is actually if they were uh, determined to deliver for the people of Afghanistan, they would not hold hostage a country, a dialogue for the recognition. Once they get the recognition, of course they would not need for talk or uh, for anything. Above all, the recognition must only come to a legitimate government of Afghanistan that represents uh, the decision of people of Afghanistan. So uh, the current uh, administration of the Taliban, unfortunately, uh, it, they made the biggest mistake, which was uh, taking Kabul militarily. And they missed the uh, great opportunity of uh, starting a new era through dialogue and peace. And this was something that we tried to tell them time after time on 15th of August onward, that do not miss this opportunity of actually allowing Afghanistan to start a new era based on trust, dialogue, and talk and a political solution. But unfortunately, them with their military takeover ruined and missed that opportunity. So as long as that uh, process is not being uh, uh, taken into consideration and for the people of Afghanistan not to actually go to that process of deciding their own future, uh, any government which comes, they do not represent Afghanistan and does not possess legitimacy. The recognition the uh, international and regional recognition should come uh, after the internal recognition. And interne internal recognition is very simple, election. What incentive do they have to come to the table? They are at an advantage right now. So my question to you is how far are you willing to compromise for the sake of dialogue and peace? Uh, I'm ready to compromise uh, anything for peace, for dialogue, for uh, establishing a government which is truly representing the people of Afghanistan, the whole nation, from different ethnicity, different group, everywhere. And in this regard, there is no line for me. For me, the red line is those values that I just mentioned. And the Taliban, yes, they are in charge right now. Uh, uh, they are controlling Kabul. But so did the Communist Party of Afghanistan, so did many other regimes. And Afghanistan, taking power is easy, holding to on to it, it's not. Is there a generation split within the Taliban? It is said that the younger Taliban are more open, more receptive to Western assistance and expectations. Has this been your impression? Well, uh, actually on the opposite. This is something that I heard. Uh, I've not been in touch. And this is another problem. Uh, that uh, I heard that the new generation are even more extreme, even more uh, dogmatic and fundamentalist, uh, which uh, is a shame because the new generation must understand the reality of today, that we are living in 21st century, that the world is going very fast and uh, to the future, and Afghanistan is stuck in the Middle Ages, unfortunately. And this is the problem. Uh, so, uh, to answer your question, it's on the contrary. Uh, I heard that the new generations are even more extreme than the previous generations. And actually, the older generation of the Taliban are the ones who are saying that, no, we tried uh, holding everything for ourselves. It doesn't work like that. But the new generations say no. So, the, there are a lot of rumors. There's a lot of spe speculations. There's a lot of things. Unfortunately, the Taliban do not possess any clear stand uh, of what actually they want for the future of Afghanistan and uh, what's their vision for the future of Afghanistan. And uh, so far, uh, everything is up to the speculation. You are leading an armed resistance against the Taliban. You've said there is no other option. But the momentum hasn't really picked up on your uh, resistance campaign. Is there an appetite for another civil war in Afghanistan? Absolutely not. The thing is that uh, we never had civil war in Afghanistan. If you refer to the wars that happened in the 90s, once again, we need to understand the interference of uh, the regional powers at that time and the uh, uh, internal affairs of Afghanistan, unfortunately, and also the international world completely abandoning Afghanistan, which caused all of that, first and foremost. Secondly, 
The reason it is happening because the Taliban are not ready to talk. The Taliban are creating atrocity and they left people with no choice but to resist and stand for the values that I just mentioned and for defending themselves. You are seeing the atrocity which is happening as we are speaking across uh, Afghanistan. Somewhere a man is being shot. Somewhere else four uh, women are being raped by the Taliban member. Another place hundreds of people are being forced to display to leave their homes, their ancestral homes, and uh, give it to the Taliban soldiers. Another place, the women are not able to go to schools. They are being stripped of their fundamental right, which not Islam, not any religion, not any ideology, nothing has been you know, uh, saying this. So when all of these atrocities are happening, and basically we are living under an authoritarian regime, so resistance is the only choice uh, that we are left with. The moment that the Taliban understand and realize, uh, and uh, come into the sense that we need to talk. We are ready to talk. Your father, Ahmed Shah Massoud, was an icon and a hero for many Afghans and uh, the international community. You invoke his memory and his legacy in, um, in your resistance against the Taliban. But for others, he was a Tajik first and dedicated to that cause. How would you respond to those who make those claims and how would you address those concerns among other ethnic communities in Afghanistan? Ahmed Shah Massoud in Afghanistan is called national hero of Afghanistan. You cannot be national hero of a country if you are only working for a, a specific ethnicity. And the title of National Hero of Afghanistan was being given to Ahmad Shah Massoud and awarded to Ahmad Shah Massoud after his shahadat and uh, martyrdom by Mr. Karzai, uh, not by some Tajik or some uh, other ethnicity. And it was uh, categorically in Afghanistan by different elites and different uh, ethnicity and groups was being accepted that Ahmad Shah Massoud for his continuation of effort throughout his career and his effort to defend his country against all enemies and defending his country against all invasions that he did for all ethnicity. He defended the Pashtuns, he defended the Tajiks, he defended the Hazaras, he defended the Uzbeks. He defended all of that and he was working for all of that. And also around him it was national icons and national uh, figures who was a part of his team and they were up, you know, uh, with him, they were his uh, friends and they were his colleagues and so it is uh, those who are trying to say and claim that he was just a tragic figure uh, they are those who are trying to basically uh, erase a historical part of Afghanistan's history so therefore no uh, the evidence is uh, obvious from his activity to his career and to his sacrifice for his country and above all that we see that uh, uh, the people of Afghanistan see him as a national icon, as a national hero, not just ethnicity, specific ethnicity's hero. Ahmed Massoud, thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for it.